So I'd like to do a quick video today that looks at the way in which courses are scheduled and how that impacts student access to those courses. So the first thing that you need to understand is that the system register will provide an initial broad definition of what a semester is or how a semester is defined. So as you can see here, these are the ones that are currently sitting in the TCUS system. And if we use the fall 2020 as an example, you can see that the system register has defined the fall as June 1st, 2020 until March 5th, 2021. Now, what that allows is the accommodation of multiple campuses, regardless of when their fall semester starts and ends. As an example, the TUC fall semester for most programs begins somewhere around the end of July or first week of August. And in most cases, ends somewhere between the second week of December to the first or second week of January. Whereas the fall semester at TUN doesn't begin until the first Monday of November and ends on the first Monday of March. So you can see that the way in which the term is defined would allow both the TUC July-August start date as well as accommodating the TUN early March end date in there. So once the system register has actually defined these terms, the next step in the process is for the local registrar to define the specific start date and end date for each semester. And locally here at TUC, the registrar does this by program code, although you can see he has the ability to create multiple terms for each program code. So as you look at that third column there, you can see that the doctoral program in nursing has three different semester codes or three different types of semesters, even though it only has one program code. And in this case, they have a semester that runs the first half of the term. They have a term defined here that runs the second half. And then they have a term that runs the full period of time so that they could offer courses in a variety of fashions. Now, the key thing with this is that the start date has to be the same for all of these programs within program. So the Graduate School of Education, as you can see, can have a different start date than the School of Nursing. Similarly, within the PA program, you'll see there are three different program codes there. You see there are two different start dates that they have there. The key is that you can't have a student that would be enrolled in two of those program codes unless they have the exact same start date. So in the case of PA, you'll see that their first and second year students, or their G1s and G2s, begin on the 4th of August, whereas their G3s or their third years begin on the 17th of August. If you go back up to the top and look at the nursing example, you'll see that all three of those doctoral terms, um, the first three items there, the first, second, and full term, all begin on the 4th. And the reason for that is because that's both when tuition becomes due and it's also when things like student aid kicks in. So the three dates that you want to look at here, and there's actually only two that show up on this sheet. So the semester start date, which is the seventh column over, and it's shaded in green most of the way down. And then the semester end date, which is shaded in reddish all the way down, and it's the last one over. And then there's also an incomplete extension date. And that is roughly a year out from the semester end date. And that's the amount of time that a student would have to complete all of the work that they may have missed in a course if they received a grade of incomplete at the semester completion. Now, I say a year because that's when the vast majority of TUC programs have set theirs. That's a campus-by-campus -campus decision, and it may even be a program-by-program -program decision. 
Um, but for the most part, the programs at TUC have decided that students have a full 12 months in which to finish the missing material from an incomplete grade, and that's the date that goes into the incomplete extension date. Now, with each of these three dates, and for that matter, this whole calendar that you see here, this gets added to Banner by the local registrar, and because it's added into Banner, it gets brought into Canvas, and I'll show you where in a couple of minutes. Now, this is decided upon by the academic leadership in each college, and in the College of Education and Health Sciences, that would include the individual program directors of the four academic units that exist within the CEHS. And this is generally determined in April for the next or coming academic year. So as an example, in a normal year, in April of this year, or April 2020, they would have made decisions about the 2021-22 academic catalog. So for the fall 2021, spring 2022, and summer 2022 semesters. So as you can see, even though the fall 2021 semester likely won't begin until July or August of 2021, the specific dates that it will start and end will have already been decided a full year and a couple of months before that actually happens. If you'd like to go and see what the academic calendars are, the latest ones, and for that matter, a number of historical ones as well, are available on the TUC website at studentservices.tu.edu forward slash register forward slash calendar dot html. Now, I mentioned that the information that's added into the student information system or banner by the registrar is brought into Canvas and most people think that it's brought in here so when you click on settings and you're in your course details you'll see that there's a box there for when the course starts a box there for when the course ends and then there's a button that you can toggle that says students can only participate in the course between these dates when selected comma the course is in a read only state outside of these dates. So that doesn't mean that the students can't access it, it just means that the students can't participate in it. So essentially they can view content, but they can't actually do anything that would require them to enter any information. And anything that is sent to them through the system that is automated doesn't get sent. However, this is not where Canvas has brought that information in from Banner. The actual location where it brings it in from Banner is here in the sections area. And it's important that we know that because when I click on the section for this particular course that I taught this past spring, you'll see that it tells me when the course runs. So it gives me the start date, which was January 5th, 2020 at 8 p.m. It also gives me the incomplete extension date, which is May 18th. 2021 at 9 p.m. and from that you can infer that the course end date was probably somewhere around May 18th 2020 because students have approximately one year to complete missing work towards an incomplete grade. You'll also notice that there is a line underneath that that says students can only participate in this course between these dates and there's not a button there. In fact, if you look at this page, other than the area that I've blacked out where it had my list of student information, which I didn't want to have available in this public video, there actually isn't anything clickable here in the sections area. So this means that if I were to do something in the course on the 5th of January at 10 o'clock in the morning, the students wouldn't be able to come in and do things that I asked them to do until 8 p.m. That becomes important because, say for example, I post an announcement at 10 a.m. While the announcement is still there and students can view it if they were to log in, the system doesn't automatically send them an email that the announcement has been posted because it's happening before the official start date of the course. I can't ask the students to come in and introduce themselves in the discussion form prior to 8 p.m 
on January 5th because the students wouldn't be able to do that because that's considered participating in the course. Similarly, if I had asked them to complete a quiz on the syllabus before the first class or to submit an assignment that was the document that they had completed in the previous course that was part of the sequence that this course belonged to so that I could see where they were and how far along they were when they started the class. Students wouldn't be able to do any of those things because that's considered participating in the course. And the reason that they're not allowed to participate in the course isn't because the university wants to control faculty and, and what they do. It's because there are federal guidelines that the university must follow. And if we didn't follow those guidelines, we would actually be out of compliance on a number of issues that would put things like financial aid for our students in jeopardy. So this is why this function has been built into Canvas as it pulls that information in from Banner. So hopefully that's been a brief look at how the schedules and semesters are defined and decided upon within the Toro system and here locally at Toro University California and how those things impact our student course access to things in Canvas.